The Laurel Awards is a big deal. I remember that moment because there are so many fabulous, fabulous nonprofits up there, and the Laurel Awards does such a great lunch and such a great job. It was it, it was such a memorable moment for those young people to be at such an event uh, with the larger community and where they're receiving recognition for, for the work that they do in the community. The Laurel Awards uh, were a brainchild of Saul Rollinger uh, of our firm 25 years ago to this year to celebrate the 100th year of the existence of Duncan Craig. Let's, let's think about what would help people make this a better place to live. And that's in the nonprofit sector, and not individuals. The organizations, they never get recognized. That's where the heavy lifting comes from, is the collective group work that comes up with all of the good deeds that Edmontonians take advantage of or get the benefit of. The awards themselves, the nominations, are reviewed by a panel that's independent of Duncan Craig. It's a, we've always had gender balance on that panel. Uh, the panel itself is composed of six people, three men, three women. There's people doing substantial, amazing work on the ground all across this city that you haven't ever heard of, and we're trying to put a spotlight on some of these programs. And we determined that we would give out three awards at that time, the gold, the silver, and the bronze. In 2015, I was diagnosed with tongue cancer. I had never been sick. When I first woke up from surgery, it was so very difficult. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't eat, I felt I was being strangled, I couldn't communicate, and I really wanted to end my journey right then and there. I was referred here. I reluctantly came in, um, went to my program for six months, and actually loved every moment of it. So that was my start of my journey into Wellspring. Wellspring is a cancer support center. We provide non-medical care and treatment. Uh, we have over 48 programs, all at no cost to members. I was leaving and one of the ladies at the desk said, you may want to try yoga. And I thought, no, I'm not a yoga person. So reluctantly, I went into yoga and yoga was amazing. Yoga came to an end and I ran into Dr. Marilyn Huntleby. And she said, Adam, why don't you try soapstone carving? Uh, no, I can't do soapstone carving. I have no artistic ability whatsoever. She said, well, just try. So I did. And I love soapstone carving. What happens is, when you're actually carving the pieces, your, your pain that you live with just melts away. I think many of our programs are about, you know, appreciating moments, which we all talk about, but sometimes we don't stay in the moment and really savor it. And I think, you know, people do learn to do more of that and enrich their lives as a result. In all actuality, I realize I will never be the same person that I was prior to having cancer. You know what? I'm a better person because of it. Because I've learned to be grateful. I've, I've learned that I can be a stronger person. Even though sometimes I may feel sorry for myself, I'm very, very lucky. Another area that the Laurel Work Clinic addressed was helping youth in a way that people may not have wanted to recognize is a need to be helped. The general community often sees young parents as being irresponsible and not capable and perhaps maybe have made, you know, not good decisions for themselves in their life. And, you know, what we see is that, yes, this unexpected life event has thrown them a curveball, but so many of them take that opportunity to really reset their lives. 
I got pregnant and I still wanted to get my diploma. I was like scared, you know, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't really know how to feel, honestly. But then once I found out about like Tara and the Brain Mars School, uh, it was like a huge weight was like lifted off my shoulders. And I was like, oh my God, I can do this. <laughs> my life's not over, you know? We are creating cards or just things to put on all of the new students' lockers so that when they come in in the fall, they come into something like happy and fun and they've got something like positive to start off with so they feel like they're already in the community, really. I recently had a, um, a young parent come back after being away for a while and she came to me and she was like, Holly, the ambassador program is what got me my job. I was able to like go into that interview and I was confident and I sold the fact that I could be the one that could represent them and that could be the person that they wanted and it's all because I was an ambassador and I was able to like learn from that. There are hard times and you do struggle, but you know, especially at this school, there's you can ask anybody for help. You can ask any of the girls because they all know, they all struggle too. Um, you can ask any of your terror workers, you can ask teachers, because everybody, everybody here is welcoming, everybody knows. It's not over, it's just a new chapter, it's just a new beginning. I think I've come really far. I'm really happy with where my life is right now, and I'm really thankful too, because I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for this school and this program. He has autism and several related conditions, and he's completely nonverbal. Before, we had a lot of struggles. He would have anxiety attacks in public. Uh, the year leading up to him, like he would bolt. The year leading up to being Mac, uh, receiving Max, he almost got hit three times because he would run in front of vehicles. Dogs with Wings is a assistance dog training school. So we have 150 working dogs in the community and 50 dogs in training right, current, right now. So it takes us two years and $40,000 to train one of our assistance dogs for a client. And the clients only ever pay a dollar for their dog. When Max came along, it meant I could breathe. I, I didn't have to be on high alert. 24-7. There was another set of eyes, you know, another set of paws to help out, and Max just stepped into that role. Dogs with Wings does care. They're amazing. The, the animals really want to work. They're eager to work. They're happy to work. And they also know that they're a part of the family. When we look at other organizations uh, that the Laurel Awards has recognized uh, in healthcare, in, in military events, uh, in community events, uh, one that's often overlooked is arts. I think one of the surprising things for a lot of people is that the Citadel is a not-for-profit. Everybody thinks that we're sort of like Broadway. We bring in these shows, you know, and we make lots of money, but we really don't. I mean, we barely pay our bills, and our tickets only pay about 38% of our bills. We won a Laurel Award for Students Club, which is a program that we have where junior and senior high school students in the area subscribe to our main stage season of shows. They come and they get a little supper beforehand, then they do a workshop based on some area of theater, then they see the show, then afterwards there's a talk back with members of the cast. I'm currently in Ziedler Hall of the Citadel Theatre and I'm a part of the Students Club uh, and it's super awesome. So the workshops definitely help you to like hone down your skills, learn new skills, bring things back, like inspire you and they also bring like a greater like rounding of understanding when you're actually watching the shows. This is actually my third year being a part of it, part of the Students Club. I keep coming back because it's probably one of my favorite things to do, like Tuesday evenings, hanging with friends after a long day of school, you can just like watch a show and be like, yes, this is what I live for.
Growing up in a single family, it was really important to my mother for us to go out and volunteer. So we'd pull up in the minivan with the meals inside and she'd send my, myself and my, my, my brothers up to the front door. We'd explain who we are and hand it over and, and shake their hand and then leave. That leaves a lasting impression on you, right? The, the, the ability to help someone who has expressed a need. So I don't know if I was 10 or 11 or 12, but it sat with me ever since. My name is Candace Elliott and I'm a volunteer driver for Meals on Wheels and I'm doing my number 21 route today, which I do every Thursday morning. Meals on Wheels! Yes, I love Arthur. He's great. He is such a creative guy. He's He's got, you know, all his paintings that he's done and he was a jewelry maker at one time. And the thing that impresses me about him now is is that he's still so busy. <laughs> See? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm always saying something funny, aren't I? <laughs> Usually. <laughs> I guess the, the only challenge I come across in delivering is sometimes I feel really badly for the people that I see and it, and it makes me sad that people are like that, uh, vulnerable and alone and uh, no family to help them. That, so that makes me um, feel a little bit bad, but otherwise it feels great to know that we're doing, making a difference in some of those people's lives. One misconception that many people have about Edmonton Meals on Wheels is that you have to be a senior to be on service and that's just simply not the case. So our kitchen is producing an average of 763 meals a day. We've never had a non-delivery day, so even on those winter days when it's super snowy and the roads are icy, our volunteers show up. They they come and they make their meal deliveries. So without them, we just, we just couldn't run and we're so grateful to have their support. When I began, I had no idea how good it was going to make me feel and I, I feel kind of selfish and saying that but you know I come home after the day and I feel good and I know all my clients are taken care of and they're in their homes and they're safe and sound and they've got a good meal to eat so it makes me feel feel great. To create an event like No Stone Left Alone where each headstone is remembered in the city, in this province now, in Canada, and now overseas. To honour that with, with the Gold Laurel Award was um, the, absolutely the right thing to do. Going to No Stone Left Alone for me was truly a great honor. It brought me to a place of realization. It helped open my eyes to let me know how lucky I am and to see the things that I take for granted. It helped me appreciate the people who did not know me but still gave up their dreams and hopes so that I could pursue mine. We gauge our success on their words, and I really believe I have uh, the words of gold of these kids across this country. Just the profound effect. They get that trifecta of the past, the present, and the future, that they are the future, and they have to remember that past. Well, Saul Rollinger is a formidable force. He has done so many things for the city of Edmonton, and this is one more of them. Uh, where he finds the time to volunteer with all sorts of different community organizations, uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure he goes to bed at night. I think he just goes home and changes his jacket and tie. Saul, Saul is an endless source of energy. I think he passionately believes in this event and its ability to promote and support the organizations who are doing amazing things in the city and in the province and all of the people on the front lines doing absolutely amazing work. It isn't just a village it takes to do great things but it takes a city and Saul really is the heart of the city in many respects so we thank him 
for all the work he does and has done.